Welcome to the daily editorial analysis of Shankarai's Academy. Today's date is 11th September 2024. So here are two editorials, one from the Indian Express and another from the Hindu newspaper. We are going to have a detailed discussion about both the editorials, one regarding the suicide prevention and the mental health, another regarding the India-UAE relationship. We are going to have a 360 degree holistic approach for both these editorials from the mains perspective. So before starting the discussion, I have an important announcement for you. Shankara Ace Academy is going to conduct an All India UPSC mock test to boost your UPSC mains preparation. You can enroll by clicking in the link given below in the description. So now without further delay, let's get into today's discussion. So look at this editorial taken from the newspaper Indian Express. So this editorial highlights the data published by the NCRB, National Crime Records Bureau. They say almost 1,70,000 had died in the year 2022 because of suicides. This is a serious problem. In a young country like India, majority of these suicides are from students, farmers and daily wage workers. We definitely need to take a look at this. Usually, suicide prevention strategy is concentrated on specific things like the family health, relationship health. But this editorial says that we need to concentrate on my macro policies, such as the example quoted in the editorial. It says that in US, they have increased the daily wage by $1. So, this increase in wage has resulted in fewer death because of the suicide. So, this editorial highlights the fact that we need to address on the macro policies than concentrating on the micro features which are causing the suicides. So, with respect to this editorial, we will see what is mental health, what are the legal and constitutional background to safeguard the mental health for the people of India. We will also address the challenges and how to deal with it. So, let us begin with the main question. Examine the impact of socio-economic factors on the mental health and what is the contribution of this socio-economic factors to the suicide rates. This is the first part of the question which we need to address. Next is, how can the effective policy interventions address these challenges to reduce the suicide rates? So, the first part, we need to address the socio-economic factors which are causing the suicide. Next, we have to understand what is the policy interventions to deal with it. Illustrate your answer with the recent data and case studies. So, now let us get into the discussion. So, first, what is mental health? Actually, mental health is a state of well-being. You should be able to realize your own potential which will help you to cope up with the stresses that is existing in everyday life. In this way, you are able to work well, perform well and contribute to the society. This is called as the mental health overall. So, it is more than just an absence of mental disorder. You have to feel better about yourself. It is a state of well-being overall. So, what are the major determinants of the mental health? First is the individual determinants. So, suppose you are experiencing a harsh parenting or bullying in school or college. This can cause anxiety, trauma in your personal level and affect your mental health. On the other turn, the emotional skills and the genetics also can impact your mental health. This is with respect to the individual determinants of the mental health. Next is the social determinants. So, if you are experiencing a positive experience in your life, such as you get a quality education, good working environment, a supportive relationship in your career as well as personal life, this can create a positive mindset and a good mental health for yourself. But in case if you are experiencing a severe poverty, inequality, violence such as the domestic violence, war, this can seriously affect your mental health in the long run. Now we will see what is the legal protection for the mental health in India. Basically, mental health is a human right. That is why India ratified the mental health in the UN Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities. Now, we will see what are the constitutional provisions which are protecting the mental health of Indian citizens. First is the Article 21. So, this is nothing but the right to life and the personal liberty. Under this article, every person, including the person with the mental illness, have the right to live with dignity. You have to underline the word dignity here. Next is the Article 14. So, this facilitates the equality before law and the equal protection of law, even though you are having a mental inability or the illness. So, you are also protected from the discrimination 
if you are having a mental illness nobody can discriminate you because a person is having a mental illness and lastly we have article 32 so this article 32 provides for the access to supreme court for the enforcement of the fundamental rights so even a person with mental illness can approach a supreme court for enforcing their fundamental rights so these are four most important constitutional provisions which are protecting the rights of the people who are having a mental illness or the poor mental health so with respect to mental health we have a important law called as the mental health care act of 2017 so this act provides right to access the mental health care services so in this section 18 you have the right to access the mental care services regardless of your financial status even though you are poor rich no matter what you have the right to access the mental health care services next is this section 19 so based on this section it says that based on this act health care has to be provided that is the mental health care has to be provided in every level of the health care primary health center, a well-developed hospital in the urban area, no matter what and where mental health care has to be provided both in the public as well as the private sector. So, the accessibility is the first provision of this act. Next is the right to informed consent. So, before a treatment is undertaken to a patient, they has to give a consent to conduct the treatment or if they are not able to make a decision for themselves, the caregiver will assist them in doing so. So, this act also provides for the decriminalization of the suicide. So, under this act, the suicide is decriminalized. That is, if a person is committing a suicide, they are not considered as criminal, but they are considered as a person who needs mental treatment. Third is the right during the hospitalization. So, if a person with mental illness is admitted, they have the right to be treated with the dignity and respect. If any mechanical restraints is to be done to the patients, it requires specific justification to do the mechanical restraints. Fifth is the role of caregivers. So, the caregivers of the mental ill people have the right to involve in the treatment process. So, these are the main provision of the Mental Health Care Act of 2017. It underlined the fact of decriminalization of suicide and the rights during the hospitalization and the role of caregivers. Along with it, it also said about the role of consent that has to be given by the patient. Now, we will see what are the challenges in addressing the mental health. First is the poverty and the economic hardship. So, a person with low income might face mental health issues as they are facing with anxiety and depression because of the poor economic background. So, this can cause a hopelessness and worthlessness among them if the issue is not properly addressed. So, you can also see there is a limited access to mental health care and support comparing to the physical illness. Also, even though if this mental care support is provided, usually they are very costly in nature. So, a person with poor economic background might face difficulty in accessing this healthcare system. Next is the unemployability and the job insecurity. You can see there is a rising unemployment rate and job insecurity in India. So, this can cause them a fear of failure and helplessness and lead to suicidal thoughts and behaviors. So, but these issues are treatable. So, they need to have a sense of confidence in them to beat the suicidal thoughts and the behaviors. Next is the workplace stress. With the rising night shifts and long working hours in today's condition, it can lead to severe depression. So, these are also some important reasons for the poor mental health. One is the poverty and the economic hardship they are facing because of the poverty which is leading to limited healthcare access. Next is the unemployment which is causing a fear of failure among them. So, this fact is also supported by the NCRB data. So, almost 1,64,000 suicides are recorded in the year 2022. So, this has to be considered as a significant public health issues because most of the suicides are from the young adults unemployment individuals and who are economically disadvantaged. Another important factor is the education. There is a social stigma with respect to the poor mental health. A lack of education with respect to the mental illness can increase the stigma attached to this mental illness. People also have 
very limited awareness with respect to the mental illness which is elevating the risk of suicides and mental health issues. Now, we will see what are the ethical and social issues with respect to the mental health. First is the social stigma. Most of them are judgmental or discriminating the people who are mentally ill. So, this has to be eliminated and a changed behavior pattern is required to address this issue. Also, there is cultural barriers. We saw there is a limited access to the mental health. So, look around you. You have number of hospitals to address the issue of your physical health. But the number of psychiatrists around you are very low in number when compared to the physiological health. And people also hesitate and do not address this issue if they are not mentally well. Usually, the rural or the under served areas have the limited access to the mental health. Other major problems with respect to the mental health are there is a poor quality of care with respect to the mental health. There is inadequate or improper treatment in the field of mental health care. There is also no comprehensive mental health policies and support system to address this issue. The inadequate funding leads to the lack of resources and support which is elevating the issue even more. So, these are the challenges which need to be addressed with respect to the mental health. So, in this editorial, we saw what is mental health and what are the determinants of the mental health. We also detailedly discussed about the Mental Health Care Act of 2017 and later we saw what are the challenges or the socio-economic factors contributing to the mental health. We concluded the discussion with the challenges with respect to the mental health. So, with this, let us complete the discussion on this editorial and now let us move on to the next one. So, this editorial regarding the ties between the UAE and India is given in the newspaper The Hindu. So, it is in the editorial because the crown prince of Abu Dhabi, UAE has visited Delhi. So, this topic that is the relationship between the UAE and India comes under the GS2 bilateral relations. So, whenever we are learning about the bilateral relation, we have to cover it from the multidimensional perspective starting from the historical background or the historical relationship that existed between the two countries. Then we can discuss about the economic relationship, what are the key strategic areas between the two countries. After covering what are the relationship that is existing between the two countries, we can address what are the recent developments that is taking place between the UAE and India. We also have to cover what are the future prospects because of this relationship. So, with this, let us see a mains question first. So, this is the mains question. Discuss the historical evolution of India and UAE relationship and examine the strategic, economic and the energy cooperation. So, in this question, first we have to address what is the historical evolution of this relationship between India and U UAE. So, this is the first part of the question. Next, you can address about the strategic areas that is the crude oil, the energy security, what are the military exercises that is conducted between the UAE. Added to that, we also have to cover about the economic relationship that is existing between these two countries. So, without further delay, let us get into the discussion. Starting with the historical relationship, we have to understand that India had an oceanic trade route between India and the Arabian Peninsula where current UAE is there. So, this trade route connected India with the Arabian Peninsula in the historic times which enabled the trade between the two countries for the export of various products such as spices, textiles and pearls. So, with this formation of UAE in 1971, India formed a formal diplomatic relationship between the two countries. So, this helped us to develop a strong relationship be in the aspect of trade, commerce and also in the field of energy security. Next, coming to the economic relationship, first we will understand about the trade relationship. UAE is one of the largest trading partner of India. So, the bilateral trade value will exceeds almost 80 billion dollars in the recent years. So, these are the key products which are exported and imported between two countries. So, from India to UAE, these products are exported such as the, the petroleum products, food items, gems, textiles and the machinery. So, added to that, crude oil, natural gas, plastics and chemicals are imported from the UAE to India. 
So, here you can note that we are importing the crude oil, but we are exporting the petroleum products. So, we are importing the raw material and exporting the finished product in this case. Next, coming to the investment perspective, many US based companies are investing in the India. So, this is in the field of real estate, technology and energy security. It is also said that Indian companies are also investing in the UAE. So, this investment between both countries is facilitated by a agreement which is signed in the recent times which is the 2022. So, in the year 2022, Comprehensive Economic Partnership Agreement was signed between the two countries. So, this reduced the tariff for the trade between two countries. It boosted the investment in both countries which is essential to strengthen the relationship between the UAE and India. So, now we will also discuss about the remittance. So, Indian diaspora in UAE is one of the highest diaspora in the world. So, these diaspora which is living in the UAE are sending their remittance to India. So, this is supporting the economic growth of India by the incoming remittances. You can see almost 3 million Indians which is about 30 percentage of the UAE population are there in UAE. So, government is undertaking several initiatives to engage with them. One such initiative is the Bharatiya Pravasi Divas. So, this day is celebrated in date January 9. So, this was initially started to celebrate the arrival of Mahatma Gandhiji from South Africa to India in the year 1950. So, since then, so on January 9, this Bharatiya Pravasi Divas is celebrated to appreciate the efforts of Indian diaspora in the foreign countries. Many programs and policies are also conducted to engage with the diaspora in the UAE. So, these policies will address the needs of the people who are living in UAE. Now, we will see what are the key areas of cooperation between the two countries. First is the oil and gas supply. You can see UAE is the major supplier of crude oil to India. The Abu Dhabi Oil Corporation is a major player with respect to crude oil supply to India. We also have many strategic oil reserves in India, but the supply of crude oil from UAE to India helps to maintain this strategic oil reserve along with the one we are having here. Talking about the investment in energy sector, many UAE based companies are investing in the India's energy security. So, this investment is done in the field of refining and storage infrastructure which will help to ensure the energy security of both the countries. Added to that, many joint ventures between the public and private partners also between the UAE and India is done to promote the energy efficiency and the energy security. India imports LNG which is the liquefied natural gas from the UAE. Recently, a project named UAE India Gas pipeline was proposed. So, this project aims to develop the infrastructure to transport the gas from UAE to India. Along with that, many strategic partnership agreements are signed between the two countries to enhance the energy cooperation. Till now, we saw what are the key strategic areas in which the both countries are cooperating. Now, we will see what are the challenges existing in this relationship. First is the trade imbalance. Actually, India is importing more than what they export. So, we have to address this trade imbalance to maintain a balanced economic relationship between both. We also have labor and immigration issues. So, the Indian diaspora who are working in the UAE are facing issues such as labor rights, poor working conditions. So, this can affect the ties which is existing between the two countries. Also, in case of regional conflicts, both parties are having their own resolution mechanism which is slightly differing from both of them. So, these can also affect the relationship between them. So, effective communication and a diplomatic ties are very much essential to resolve the disputes which are existing between the two countries in case of these issues such as the labor immigration issues. So, I already said we have to cover what are the recent developments that is taking place between the both countries when we are learning about the bilateral relationship. First is the already discussed SEPA agreement which is the comprehensive economic partnership agreement. So, this will enhance the trade investment between both countries and promote the economic cooperation between them. So, note that this agreement was signed in the year 2022 May. Many joint projects are also conducted within both countries, especially in the field of solar energy. So, this 
joint projects will enable both the countries to achieve the sustainable goals which are fixed by them. We also have a military exercise called as the Desert Eagle. So, this joint military exercise will enhance the military ties that is existing between both the countries. So, in this editorial discussion, we started from the historical relationship between both the countries. We also discussed what is the economic relationship both the countries in, in the aspect of trade, investment as well as the remittances. We then discussed what are the key areas in which both the countries are cooperating, be it oil and energy, LNG and lastly we saw what are the challenges and the recent developments undertaken between them. So, with this we will conclude the discussion on this editorial. We have come to end of today's video. If you found the video informative, do hit like, give your thoughts as comment and do not forget to subscribe. Thank you. Have a nice day.